welcome back in this lecture we look at what are called planar graphs planar graphs play a very important role uh, in graph theory especially uh, you know in in dealing with complex problems where uh, many other uh, techniques uh, fail uh, on general graphs we try to look at special class of graphs and one of the most important classes of graphs that comes uh, into mind is that of planar graphs so what are planar graphs if you look at graphs when you think about it one of the things that you always think about is the representation of the graph as vertices and edges that are mapped onto the plane now when we draw a graph on the plane it often happens that like you need to draw the edges such that they are just cross each other but if it is possible to draw such a way that the edges does not cross then it it's much easier to visualize and therefore uh, one would like to see if it is possible to draw a given graph on the plane without the edges being crossed so what we want to uh, do is to see under what conditions we can have this property and what can you say about such graphs do they have some specific structure and questions related to that this is what uh, comes under the study of planar graphs okay, so let me define what uh, a planar graph is uh, more formally a graph is uh, said to be embedded on a surface okay so the surface can be the plane or it can be uh, you know you know other surfaces like torus or higher genus surfaces a graph is said to be embedded on a surface if you can map the vertices of the graph to distinct points on the surface and the edges of this graph to simple curves okay between the corresponding points so that no two curves intersect except at their end point this is what we mean by saying that it is uh, not crossing so when i say simple curve these are actually uh, more uh, technical terms which i don't want to go into the details but for the time being just uh, take it for uh, granted that uh, when i say a, a curve with simple curve uh, that uh, it's a curve which does not intersect itself so take uh, uh, simple curves between the corresponding points and we don't want no two curves to intersect except at the vertices where they uh, have their end points if if such an uh, drawing uh, is possible then we say uh, this is an embedding of the graph on that surface now if this particular surface happen to be the plane r2 then we say the graph is uh, planar okay so a graph that admits an embedding on the plane uh, is called a planar graph. so here are some examples so the first graph that you see here is uh, you know a graph on uh, six vertices and uh, uh, you have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 h right so you have this uh, this graph uh, and then uh, and, and and you can you can very well see that this graph is represented on the plane where uh, you know you have the vertices as distinct points and whenever uh, you have uh, uh, an edge between uh, a pair of vertices then you draw uh, a line segment connecting them and uh, this has the property that the line segments does not intersect anywhere except at the vertices 
Similarly, the second graph, you can see uh, again as a collection of points and uh, lines such that, uh, uh, you know, and curves such that they don't uh, intersect each other. So therefore, we can say that uh, this is also a planar graph. Now, a graph uh, can be a planar graph even though its uh, representation that we, you know, uh, draw on the plane is uh, not satisfying this uh, embedding property, right? For example, what we are saying is that uh, a graph is planar if it admits an embedding, right? So the definition of the planar graph does not say that, you know, your embedding needs to be planar embedding uh, for the graph to be planar, right? Only that it has at least one embedding where it is planar. So to see the difference, let us look at this graph, which is a complete graph on four vertices. Right? Uh, you have this first embedding, Right, where uh, they are just actually intersect each other. Right? Therefore, this is not a planar embedding, but the graph is planar. You have uh, this uh, planar graph, which uh, whose embedding, uh, the given embedding is not a planar embedding. Right? It's not an embedding on the plane. But the graph is planar because it admits a plan embedding, right? So if you look at the second picture, it's the same uh, graph with a different embedding, which is also an embedding on the plane. Now, consider uh, this uh, embedding of the graph, right? The second embedding, right? Which is uh, which is an embedding on the plane. Now. Uh, an embedding together with the graph together with an embedding is called a plane graph. Right? So embedding of a, a particular embedding of a graph is uh, uh, if it is uh, on the plane, then we say the graph is a plane graph. So a planar graph together with an embedding is called a plane graph. So the second uh, embedding, we say it is a plane graph because it comes with the embedding, but the first embedding uh, you know, first uh, drawing, right? So you cannot say it's an embedding on the plane, right? So the first drawing uh, is uh, uh, not a, an embedding. Therefore, uh, the graph is planar, but it is uh, not uh, a planar embedding, right? So therefore, uh, we don't say it's a plane graph. It is a planar graph. Now, let us look at... Uh, an example uh, on R, right? So consider a plane graph uh, on R. Now, if you if you look at uh, such a representation, you will see that, you know, uh, intuitively speaking, you will see that if you if you look at any cycle, right? If you, if you take any cycle in the graph, the graph has cycles, then the cycle basically forms a kind of closed curve, right? Now, if there is a closed curve on, on the plane R2, then uh, you know, this closed curve basically separates the, the region, right? Uh, or the, the, the plane into two parts, right? The region into two parts. One is the inside part of the curve and one is the outside part of the curve. Now, <clears throat> this again is intuitively clear, but uh, to prove this uh, is uh, not uh, exactly simple. So we will not go into it. Uh, this can be uh, studied in, an, in another different course. Uh, but uh, you know, this is a very famous result called uh, Jordan curve theory. Okay. So, what is the uh, Jordan? Uh, Jordan curve theorem uh, saying, right? So, if you take any simple closed curve C in R2, then 
this curve partitions the rest of R2, right? Except the points of the curve, right? The points of the curve forms a subset. So if you remove this point, right? So it partitions the rest of R2 into two disjoint arcwise connected open sets. Okay. So again, these terms are technical, but what uh, we want to say is that if you take the entire R2, just put one simple closed curve, right? Which a uh, curve which does not intersect itself, then uh, it divides the region into two parts, right? One is the inside and one is the outside. The inside part is connected if the graph is simple. Uh, it is connected in the sense that you can you can find uh, you know a curve connecting any two points of this uh, area. It's an open set. And similarly, the outside part is also uh, have, have the same uh, having the same property. So this is what uh, Jordan curve theorem says that you know it partitions the region into two parts. Now, if you come back to the embedding, you will see that. Uh, take the embedding of any given graph then what you do is that you remove remove all the points uh, of this embedding that is the uh, the point that belongs to the curves representing the edges as well as the vertices so if you remove all these points then the region might uh, have several uh, connected uh, you know, uh, it gets uh, in, in several connected components. Right? So these uh, connected parts uh, of the region, the remaining parts, are called the faces of uh, of the graph. Okay? So intuitively, uh, it is clear that if you look at uh, you know a picture of the graph, right? So you look at uh, this connected regions which you can find inside. Right? They are all faces. For example, this is a phase. This is another phase. And then the outside part is also a phase because it's also a connected region, which I call uh, F1. So when you take uh, any embedding of a planar graph on the plane, uh, you can you can uh, talk about the faces uh, of the graph. So the faces of the graph are basically the external face, right? The outside face, where you know every point other than uh, the other uh, faces and the curves, and then the internal faces or bounded face, right? There is unbounded face, and there is also uh, the other uh, other faces are all uh, bounded. So again, this uh, fact that you can you can define these phases is a consequence of the Jordan curve. Now here are a couple of more examples. If you look at the first graph, there is no cycle. Therefore, you know removing these uh, points of the embedding does not uh, create a disjoint set, right? I mean, there is only one set. Uh, they, they don't create several sets. Right? So there is only one connected component. Therefore, that is the only phase, which is the out, outer phase or the unbounded external phase. So that is the first example. In the second example, you will see that uh, you have another graph with a very nice uh, looking embedding. And uh, you can see there are exactly three phases. right? So what are these three phases? The phase one is this uh, uh, the four uh, edges form a cycle. Then uh, you have another uh, phase, uh, bounded phase, which is F2 marked here, which is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight edges, right? Then the entire remaining part, uh, you know, is one connected uh, area. So therefore, that forms a phase F3. Uh, even though you know uh, you have this uh, weird uh, shapes, all these areas are connected. Therefore, that entire part uh, 
So it is outside, out of space only, right? It might look like internal part uh, if you are not careful. Uh, in a, uh, some certain drawings, you might think that, you know, like uh, parts like this uh, might look like uh, internal face, but uh, it could be uh, uh, external face. So uh, you have to be careful, but uh, you know one can look through the embedding clearly and uh, carefully, and then you can see uh, what are precisely the uh, faces of the graph. Now, here I give you an example uh, of uh, uh, a graph, which is which I claim uh, that it is not planar. That you cannot find an embedding on the plane. Uh, where uh, you know now it just cross each other. Okay, so this is the first graph is the complete graph on pi vertices, which is K five, and I claim that this graph is not planar. I welcome you to think uh, why. Uh, this is not planar, right? Or uh, of uh, how do you prove uh, a graph is not planar? Because uh, you know to show a graph is planar, all you have to do is to come up with an embedding, right? Where it just does not cross each other. To show a graph is planar is easy, in the sense that uh, you know you just need to come up with one embedding. But now, if I ask you to prove a graph is not planar, then how will you do it? You know, if you, if you look at one embedding and say that, okay, here they just cross, then I can say that, okay, that is not a proof, right? Because uh, as I showed you before, you have this graph K4, right? Uh, where uh, we saw that there is an embedding where they just cross, but uh, the graph is still planar, right? So showing me uh, 10 different drawings and saying that, okay, none of these drawings are, uh, you know, uh, planar embeddings, is not a proof that the graph itself is not planar. Okay. So think about this, right? Uh, uh, in this example, we saw that you have the graph, complete graph on four vertices, but it ha it also had a, a nice plane embedding, right? Now, uh, can you come up with an argument uh, to show that the graph is not planar. Here is another uh, non-planar graph, which is the graph uh, complete uh, bipartite graph, uh, K33. So this complete bipartite graph K33 is also not planar. That is my claim. Okay. Again, try to try to draw this graph uh, and make uh, the embedding so that uh, you know. It is possible uh, try to make it planar or try to minimize the number of edge crossing and see where you are going to miss out. Okay, so if it is possible to do this, then uh, it would be nice. And then another way uh, to show uh, is to think about uh, you know proving how uh, this is uh, non, no, how to show this is non-planar. And uh, I suggest that you can also try to use the ideas of uh, Jordan curve theorem. So how do you prove this using Jordan curve theorem? So that would be a nice, uh, nice exercise to think about. We will we will come to this later. Now <clears throat> you have uh, a homework question that. Uh, you know, try to embed uh, the complete graph uh, on on the torus, okay, so that none of its faces are triangle. Okay? This is a uh, this is a just a intellectual exercise. Uh, try to see how you can come up with this. Okay, so what is a torus? Let me try to draw it.
So uh, this is uh, this is a drawing of a torus that uh, just to show that this is basically uh, this is basically a, a cylinder that is connected together right at the end points uh, uh, so that uh, you know you get a uh, you get a medvada uh, shape uh, object right or a donut shaped object. So this is basically uh, a surface. Uh, with a genus uh, more than uh, the genus of uh, the uh, the sphere. Okay. So, like if you if you take a sphere, if you take a sphere. Uh, and then you attach a you attach a handle. Okay, like this. Uh, then uh, you know this uh, topologically is uh, equivalent to the torus. So basically, this is the number of handles uh, uh, tells you the genus, and uh, the genus of uh, the torus is uh, one. And uh, you can have higher genus. And when you increase the uh, genus, you will see that uh, you will be able to uh, put more and more. Uh, edges without uh, the need for crossing, right? Because the surface becomes more uh, complicated, you can do uh, more uh, stuff like this. Now, uh, the interesting part uh, about this exercise is that if you, if you look at the embedding of the planar graph, uh, the, the, the K4 on the plane, right? The complete graph on four vertices, right? On the plane, all its faces are triangles, right? You look at, any of these phases, right? Each phase is basically a three cycle. The boundary of any phase is a three cycle. Uh, even the outer phase, right? The boundary is a three cycle. But uh, on the other hand, what uh, I want you to do is to find an embedding, okay? On uh, find an embedding on the torus uh, for this uh, graph so that no phase is a triangle. Okay? This is uh, probably not immediate, but if you think about it, uh, you will uh, be able to come up with a, uh, an answer. Now, if you studied, uh, you know, school uh, geometry, you might, you might have come across uh, these objects, right? These are the platonic solids. There are five, uh, uh, you know, regular polyhedron, which are called platonic solids. And these are the tetrahedron, right? That is the first one. The tetrahedron uh, has uh, four uh, vertices, right? And uh, uh, four faces. And then uh, six edges, right? You can, you can verify that there are six edges, uh, four vertices and four edges. Uh, four vertices and uh, four faces, right? Now, the reason uh, for, you know, the graph, right? Uh, you know, the, the vertices of the graph, edges of the graph, and uh, uh, faces of the graph uh, are uh, called to be uh, vertices, edges, and faces. Also uh, has some uh, thing to do with uh, uh, these shapes. Okay? So, uh, you have this uh, platonic solids. First one is tetrahedron. Second one is cube, right? Uh, which is, uh, we are all familiar with. Uh, it has uh, uh, eight uh, vertices, uh, twelve edges, and six faces. Then you have the octahedron, right? And and each face of the cube is basically uh, a, a square. And you have the octahedron, where you have uh, triangular uh, faces again. You have uh, eight faces. Then you have uh, twelve edges. And you have uh, six uh, six uh, vertices. Then you have the icosahedron, right? Which has uh, how many faces? Uh, one, two, three, four, five plus five plus uh, ten, right? So twenty faces. It has uh, twelve vertices. I think five plus five plus two, twelve vertices. And then you have. Uh, how many edges you, you have? Like you have five, you know, uh, yeah. 
5 plus 5 plus uh, yeah uh, yeah so we already counted that right uh, no 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 5 plus 5 plus 5 plus 5 that is 20 plus uh, uh, 10 right 30 uh, 30 uh, edges right Am I, am I right? That the edges, uh, 10 and uh, how many, uh, 20, 5 plus 5 plus, uh, yeah, 20, 20 faces. So 20 faces. Twenty faces plus uh, twelve. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you have uh, thirty. Uh, now then you have the dodecahedron, which has uh, you know pentagonal faces, and then uh, it has uh, how many? One, two. Then one, two, three, four, two, three, four, five. Five plus five plus ten plus twelve uh, faces, and then uh, it has. Uh, uh, 30 edges. Right? So uh, these are the uh, platonic solids. Now, if you if you uh, look at this more carefully, you will see that uh, uh, you know the number of faces of the cube is the number of vertices of the uh, octahedron, and the number of faces of the octahedron, uh, and uh, I know, I know, and uh, the number of uh, uh, vertices of the cube are also the same, right? Similarly, if you look at the icosahedron and dodecahedron, again, uh, the number of faces uh, in one becomes the number of uh, vertices in the other and vice versa. And then uh, tetrahedron uh, stands alone and uh, but uh, if you can if you can try to connect, uh, you know, between, you know, find a connection between the cube and octahedron, or the icosahedron and dodecahedron, uh, the same relation holds for tetrahedron with itself. So this is a kind of uh, what's called duality. We will not go into the duality in this course, but uh, it may be nice to think about this. But uh, we will see something uh, very nice about uh, this, and there is a there is a, a relation between uh, you know the vertices. Uh, edges and uh, faces, which was proved by uh, uh, Euler, Leonard Euler, uh, and uh, you know that has been generalized to uh, planar graph as well. So we will see what is this relation. So let's uh, look at uh, the the tetrahedron case. So it has four vertices, six edges, and four faces. Let us observe that uh, the number of vertices, right, which is 4, plus number of faces, which is 4, is equal to number of edges 6 plus 2. Now, if you take, uh, you know, the cube also, you will see that number of vertices, which is 8, plus number of faces, which is 6, is equal to 14, which is 12 plus 2, which is the number of edges plus 2, right? Similarly, you will see uh, the same thing holds for uh, the, uh, you know, the octahedron, icosahedron, and dodecahedron. Okay, so verify this, and then uh, uh, take any graph, right? So take a planar graph, look at the embedding, right, and look at the number of faces, right? If you take any graph like this, it has uh, eight vertices, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Then it has uh, nine edges, four plus four plus one, and uh, exactly three faces, one, two, and three. And uh, eight plus three, right? The number of edges plus three is actually equal to uh, the number of uh, number of uh, vertices plus a uh, number of faces. It's actually equal to number of edges plus two. Take any other uh, planar graph, for example, the one below, you have uh, 13 vertices, 18 edges, and uh, seven faces, right? 
and again uh, 13 uh, plus uh, 7 is equal to 18 plus 2. So this is uh, easy to see. 